What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some of the top features contained inside of Flex Tools for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as many of you know, Flex Tools is a tool designed to help you really quickly create doors, windows, and other architectural elements quickly within SketchUp. And so I love Flex Tools because it is such a time saver. So one of the things I really hate is I hate modeling out the details around doors doors and windows and other things like that. Well, Flex Tools has a collection of dynamic options that you can bring into SketchUp in order to quickly create things like glass doors or regular doors or windows or other things like that. One of the cool things about this is Flex Tools is currently on sale for 30% off. Um, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash flex tools. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning I would receive a commission if you did purchase through that link. But Let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at some of the best tools contained inside of Flex Tools. And so first off, we've got a feature that you wouldn't think would be a big deal, but if you've ever tried to update extensions in SketchUp, you know kind of is. It actually has the ability to check for updates and update just by clicking on an update button. And I updated this before I started this video. I should have um, recorded it, but I didn't. But usually what'll happen is in the settings function right here, there's a button for update. When you click on it, this will just download the update. It'll update directly inside of SketchUp without you having to uninstall it or anything like that. All you have to do is restart SketchUp. <laughs> that is actually much less painful than the update process for a lot of other extensions in SketchUp. All right, so next up, and a feature that I don't use a ton, but it is kind of helpful, is you have a Flex Tools option in here for a grade and slope calculator. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the ability to bring in this object right here, and you can go ahead and align it. Um, remember that this is a dynamic component, meaning you can adjust it right here. But what this is gonna do is it's actually a dynamic component that'll let you calculate slopes. So right now, for example, notice how if I adjust this out, it's not really gonna do a ton, right? I can kind of adjust it up and down um, in order to get the slope to kind of look the way that I want, but this'll actually let you come in here and it'll let you calculate a slope by typing in a value. So right now, for example, this is 149 inches. Well, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I only want this to be 96 inches. I'm gonna want the slope to slope over, um, we'll call it 24 inches right here. Well, what I can do is I can update that and this is gonna come in here and this is going to update to an object that actually shows you what that slope might look like so that you can actually visualize slopes in your model using this tool. You can also set this to a certain number of degrees or a grade percentage as well down below using these functions. So very simple tool, but something where if you are doing grades can be kind of helpful. And so one of the functions that I actually use in here a lot is the flip function. And so you've got the option in here to just take an object and just flip it left or right or up or down in place like this. This is actually super helpful for situations like these components right here, where you wanna place them in the wall, um, but you need to flip the orientation around. So those flip functions are actually really helpful. Okay, so next up, let's talk about how you can update multiple components at once, right? Because if I come in here right now and I select this dynamic component and I make a change, so say I want this to have three divisions in it, like this, well, that's only changing on one of my windows. However, what's cool about this is if you do a shift click in here and you select multiple components like this that are the same object, you can actually come in here and make an adjustment. So say I wanted these to have three divisions, this is going to update both of those windows. So you can actually use this to update multiple copies of the same component in here at once. So say that I wanted to set this so that it wasn't quite as deep, so I'm just gonna adjust this inset to like two inches, but notice how when I make that adjustment, both of these windows change. All right, so next up, let's talk about the flex stairs function. So the flex stairs function is interesting because what it does is it just generates this kind of like, uh, this kind of simple stair like this. So if I take the stair, and I rotate it. Notice there's nothing really special about the way that the stair looks. It doesn't get ultra complex or anything like that. But what it does do is it allows you to take this object and you can scale it up and it's going to automatically adjust based on your settings that you have in here um, in order to generate a stair. So if I wanted a stair that kind of like goes up the wall right here and gets to the top, that's really easy to do. And so say you wanted to set your tread 
to something not quite as long, so say you wanted those treads to be 12 inches, you could come in here and you could make that adjustment right here. One other cool function about this is if you use the interact function in here, you can actually set a landing location. So notice how if I click in here, this is going to allow me to set a landing using this, uh, using this interact function wherever I want it to be. So you can set a longer landing just by coming in here and typing in that length. So say I wanted this to be 48 inches long, I can just come in here and type that in and that's going to adjust the stair. Now there is also a function over here for an L-shaped stair, which would go around the corner if you wanted to do that. But you can use this to quickly create stairs in SketchUp. All right, so let's take a look at our dynamic door options. So you've got multiple different kinds of doors in here, including pocket doors, um, regular doors, or glass doors. So let's place a glass door in this wall right here. So I'm just gonna place this, and I'm gonna move it so that it aligns right here. And again, we'll talk about the hole cutting functionality in a minute, but the cool thing about these doors is they are fully adjustable, right? Meaning I can come in here and I can set my overall opening width to whatever I want, right? So I can type in 36 inches right here. I can type in 90 inches, whatever you want this door to be, you can adjust that. Now, notice that you can click in here into the sub component, which is the glass door overall, and you can adjust things about this door. And so for example, you can set if this door has two panels instead of one panel like this, which obviously isn't going to make sense at the moment. But if we were to click back out of this and then adjust the overall width, then it might, right? If you wanted this to be 72 inches, you can see how you can set that right here. Then we're just gonna slide this door back over in place like this. So these are fully adjustable and the other doors are too. So say you placed a door kind of on the backside over here, and maybe this is more of a standard um, door like this, but you can place this on the wall and it's gonna be the same thing. All right, and so another cool thing about this tool is the way that it works with the interact function because what the interact function does is it allows you to toggle if doors are open or closed. It also works with windows. So that interact function and the way that it interacts with these tools is actually really interesting. Obviously there's nothing to do with windows like this one because they're not operable, but you can set your landings, you, you can toggle your slope arrow. So most of these tools, if they do something, actually interact really well with the interact tool. Okay, and so one of my favorite features in Flex Tools is the dynamic windows because I hate modeling windows. It just takes so much time um, and it just kind of drives me crazy. And so what you can do is you can bring these windows in and first off, notice how they cut an opening in your wall, which is great. Um, and again, we're going to talk about that more in a second, but then you can bring these in and they are fully adjustable using the scale function right here. So I can use this in order to adjust this window and all of these different parts and pieces are gonna adjust with it. And these are all dynamic, meaning you can come in here and you can make adjustments to like the inset, for example. Like I don't really want this inset four inches in my wall. Well, I can just change that. Um, I can also come in here and adjust if this window is going to have a sill or not just by applying this. So if you don't want the sill, you can toggle that on and off right here. And you can also set things like the thickness of the wall this is in, right? So I modeled these as like four inches of wall. Um, so I'm just coming in here and making that adjustment right here, but you can use that in order to quickly make changes. And you've got a number of different kinds of windows in here. So if you just want like a simple commercial window, for example, you can pick this, uh, this fixed window and I could take this fixed window, I can make it longer, I can make it narrower and I could toggle that sill off like this, maybe set my inset to zero, and I've got a very nice commercial style window in here. And I want this sill to be off. There we go. But you can see how adding these simple windows in here and then adjusting them is really easy. That's what I like about this as opposed to using something like Lattice Maker, which is a great tool by the way. But um, I can't really make adjustments after the fact. These are live. I can move them around in my wall like this, and it's just a super simple way to add windows. And then if you wanted to add divisions in here, you can set the number of units, right? So say I wanted this to be six divisions right here, you can set the number of units, you can adjust the mullion width and depth. So if I wanted these mullions to be like an inch, for example, I could type in 
value of an inch, and it's going to adjust those. So those are very easy to make changes with inside of SketchUp without having to do a bunch of rework. And so one function that a lot of people don't even know that um, Flex Tools has is the component finder option. This is actually a component browser for SketchUp, meaning you can use this to open up different folders and access component libraries. And so it's really easy to use. You can open or close folders and you can bring objects in using the folder. So for example, if I wanted to bring in this door, I could do that using this folder right here. And so this is actually a really easy way to manage components inside of your SketchUp models. All right, and I would say, in my opinion, the best feature about Flex Tools is the way that it cuts openings in objects. So say that I had a brick wall that was over like a CMU backup. And so that could be a problem if you're trying to add something like a window. So let's say we wanted to add this arch window in here. Well, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's going to cut a hole in this wall, but notice how it's kind of like dropping that in the middle of the other wall over here so you can't really see it. Well, you can select the option for wall cutter in here and within wall cutter with that component selected, if this is set as a wall cutter, you can actually tell this to cut through a certain number of faces. So notice what this did is this is actually adding this into the wall and it's cutting through one, two, three, four faces inside of SketchUp. And then you can come in here and you can make adjustments still, right? So you can still adjust things like the depth like this. So you can see how this is now placed in kind of the, the middle of the wall, but this is actually coming in here and this is cutting this wall live. So if you move this over, notice how that opening in multiple walls is being adjusted right here. So you can use this in order to cut deep openings in walls really quickly. So we do the same thing here, just bring up the number of faces we want it to cut, and this is going to dynamically adjust. And since this is live, I can align this with the top of this object right here, and that cut is going to move along with this. So super easy way to do these complex cuts in these thick walls in SketchUp. So, so far, other than like maybe Revit or something like that, this is actually one of the best implementations of dynamic architectural elements that I've seen. So um, I'm a big fan of Flex Tools, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you do want to check it out as a part of their Black Friday sale, you can check that out at the link on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.